Hello there, so after building my Tantive board in playset, which I then turned into a diorama, which thank you for all the love on that video, and I also made a little battle pack out of it as well, which doesn't harm the diorama, but I really like the mechanism for the door to open, and that's taken me to another diorama, which you've already seen the scene in the thumbnail, but of course, I don't want to show off too much, so we will take a look at it in a second, but... I can tell you that it does involve a very, very similar mechanism to the Tantive. It's built completely different. I didn't want to copy what LEGO have done. I've built my own Technic mechanism to get the door sliding open and shut. And I think this could have been the diorama for LEGO to celebrate 25 years of not only LEGO Star Wars, but also The Phantom Menace. Now, before we get to the desk and take a closer look, I do have two ideas projects going at the minute. I've just submitted a new ET one. If you're interested, I'll leave the links in the description. And of course, my mannequin hand for anyone that is new here does still need your support. So please be sure to head over there. You can sign in using your Lego account. You don't need to sign up if you already have a Lego account. And thank you all for the amazing support. And here it is, the Duel of the Fates diorama. Now, I've gone with the Naboo hanger. And as you can see, I've included a few accessories we'll get to in a minute. But the reason I've gone with the Naboo hanger and not any of the other scenes that we see during this fight scene between Kenobi, Qui-Gon and Darth Maul, who is present for this diorama. I'll show you that in a second. But the reason I've went with this one is because we've already got a Lego playset of the final scene where Qui-Gon meets his demise. Actually, the playset is where I got all three minifigures for this diorama, so it was very handy to pick up a few years ago. We've also seen different Funko dioramas of them fighting on the way to that place. So that area's been covered. But I've never seen a fight scene captured from these first few moments where Darth Maul is revealed. Honestly, it's one of the greatest reveals. I know we'd already seen Darth Maul in the movies. But when Duel of the Fates kicks in and Maul steps out from behind those blast doors, honestly, it's one of the highlights of the movie for me. It's one of the greatest reveals in Star Wars for a Sith or just anyone. And I had to capture it in Lego form. We have got playsets of these for the action figures, but again, no Qui-Gon, Kenobi, Maul, so really it's up to you to create it. Now for the grand reveal, you can see there is a knob just at the top of this here, and I've left the gears exposed so you can see sort of what's going on in a second. But if you slide this, you reveal the Sith Lord, which is really cool. You can slide it back and slide it again, and... It doesn't actually make too much noise for how many cogs we use, but I think this is an amazing mechanism for the doors just to be able to open and close on demand. Now, if I open them, you can see that there are different tolls used here. And honestly, this is just a Lego plug at this point, because I am going to say that this is why Lego beats all the other competition, because there's different tolls in there, which you'd think if you went over they'd get stuck on at least the 2x4 in the middle. However, they glide over it nice and smoothly, and it's just really why LEGO is the better brick building system. But if we flip it around, you can see Darth Maul is very, very snug there. I would have liked to have given him more space, but I really wanted to include some of this detail in the middle. We've got these crates here, which you can see at certain angles of the movie, and... I only really used two scenes to build this. I used the one where Maul has revealed himself to sort of get the position of Kenobi, Qui-Gon and Maul to get the how far away they are from the door. And of course, you know, Maul's been pacing up and down the other side of this door just waiting for his reveal. And then the other one I used was for the closed doors when Maul is first revealed. They run up to the door. Not Qui-Gon and Kenobi, but all of them, Padme, Panikar, all the guards, the handmaidens just to see what the door looks like. Now, there are two triangles and a bit more detail in the middle. The doors had to be flush to fit in the gap when they are retracted because it's only a one block wide hole. But I did try to add some of that triangle design in a Lego bricky form, which I guess has worked quite nicely for this scale. And that goes for all the detail around the doors. The pipe work we've got here the different machines you've got on the left and right, which use a whole range of pieces to get them looking as accurate to the movie. I also, instead of building this up and just bricking it out flat, like I've done with a Tantive, with Moss Eisley, with a Dark Trooper attack, honestly with 
pretty much all my dioramas at this point. I've actually created some nice sloped roofs and tiled off a few bits to get it looking like some of the structures you see around the boot and that has just made me a lot more able to hide all the gear work that you can see just through the top there. Now I've left it a little revealed, I mean you can't really see too much but you can see more on the back with all the different gears that are used here. There are a total of eight gears inside and they just roll against one of them nice toothed panels which are on top of the doors. Perhaps I'll pull it apart in a second. But this gear does turn the doors and as you can see because it's on the left gear both gears are turning the opposite ways which means rather than moving the doors at the same direction they're turning different gears which follow these chains and enable the doors to open the opposite ways which was something that it was probably the longest part designing this set because I'm not too keen on Technic. I haven't had too much experience beside, I guess, building the odd Technic car and bike. And I really think that brings this diorama together. So if you enjoy it enough to want the rebrickable model for this, do let me know. I can definitely build this on studio and get the rebrickable model out for you because... I mean, it takes the same eight Technic gears. I'm pretty sure it's mostly these gears. There might be a few other ones that look a bit like this. I honestly can't remember which ones I used at this point. But there are a lot of pieces that you can just substitute for whichever design you like. And sometimes having the instructions just allows you to piece out your own one. So you don't have to build it exactly like this. But if you want the instructions to help you build your own, definitely let me know. And I'm a big fan of these sliding doors. So... I will eventually be revisiting the Dark Trooper attack as that wasn't the least voted set. They still somehow hanging around. You'd think with the newly announced Mario Kart sets that the Mario Kart diorama would be a little more popular. But that is what this diorama will be replacing. It's a cool diorama, a nice Phantom Menace one. Actually my second Phantom Menace diorama. If you haven't seen Mock Espar, it is massive. 48 by 48 studs. Check it out on the end card after this video. But I hope you did enjoy this diorama. I have spared no expense of the little details here. All the different lights around the door and even built. This machine here, I have no idea what this machine is. I assume it's some sort of polisher to polish the floors. But leave your guesses down in the description below. No wrong answers. Let me know what you think this machine is used for. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Drop a like if you do indeed like this diorama. Subscribe for more awesome LEGO content. And may the bricks be with you always.